When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? When the hurly-burly's done. When the battle's lost and won. That will be ere the set of sun. Where the place? Upon the heath. There to meet with Macbeth. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filthy air. What bloody man is that? He can report as seemeth by his plight of the revolt. Sire, this is the sergeant who, like a good and hardy soldier, fought against my captivity. Uh, hail, brave friend. Say to the king the knowledge of the broil as thou didst leave it. Hail, oh, brave sergeant. Sire, brave Macbeth, well he deserves that name, disdaining fortune with his brandished steel which smote with bloody execution, like Bala's minion carved out his passage till he faced the slave, which ne'er shook hands nor bade farewell to him till he unseamed him from the nave to the chaps and fixed his head upon her battlements. Oh, valiant cousin. I must report Banquo and Macbeth were as cannons, overcharged with double cracks, so they doubly redoubled strokes upon the foe. But I am faint... My gashes cry for help. So well thy words become thee as thy wounds. They smack of honour both. Go get him, surgeons. Who comes here? The worthy Thane of Ross? God save the king. Whence camest thou, worthy Thane? From Fife, great king, where the Norwegian banners flout the sky and fan our people cold. Norway himself with terrible numbers Assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cawdor began a dismal conflict, till that Bologna's bridegroom, lapped in proof, confronted him with self-comparisons, point against point rebellious, arm against arm, curbing his lavish spirit, and, to conclude, the victory fell on us. Great happiness! That now Sueno, the Norway's king, craves composition. Nor would we deign him burial of his men till he dispersed at St. Colm's Inch ten thousand dollars to our general use. No more that Thane of Cawdor shall deceive our bosom interest. Go pronounce his present death, and with his former title greet Macbeth. I'll see it done. What he have lost, noble Macbeth hath won. Where hast thou been, sister? Killing swine. Look what I have. Show me, show me. Here I have a pilot's thumb. <sighs> Rector's homeward he did come. A drum, a drum, Macbeth doth come. The, the weird, weird sisters, sisters hand in hand. Posters of the sea and land. Thus do go, go about, about, about. Thrice to thine and thrice to mine. And thrice, thrice again, again to make up nine. Peace. The charms wound up. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. Her fire is called to forest. What a feast. So withered and so wild in their attire, that look not like the inhabitants of the earth, and yet are aunt. Live you, or are you aught that man may question? You seem to understand me, by each at once her choppy finger laying upon her skinny lips. You should be women, and yet your beards forbid me to interpret that you are so. Speak if you can. What are you? Oh, hell, Macbeth, hell to thee. Thane of Glamps. All hail Macbeth. Hail to thee, Thane of Corder. All hail Macbeth. Thou shalt be king hereafter. Good sir. 
Why do you start and seem to fear things that do sound so fair? In the name of truth, are ye fantastical, or that indeed which outwardly ye show? My noble partner, you greet with present grace and great prediction of noble having and of royal hope that he seems wrapped with all. To me you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak then to me, who neither beg nor fear your favours nor your hate. Hail. 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 Lesser than Macbeth and greater. Not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings, though thou be none. So all hail Macbeth and Banquo. Banquo and Macbeth, all hail. Stay, you imperfect speakers. Tell me more. By Sinnel's death I know I am Thane of Glams, but how of Cordor? The Thane of Cordor lives, a prosperous gentleman. <laughs> to be king stands not within the prospect of belief, no more than to be Cordor. Say from whence you owe this strange intelligence, or why upon this blasted heath you stop our way with such pathetic greeting. Speak, I charge you. Whither are they vanished? Into the air, as breath into the wind. Would they had stayed. Were such things here as we do speak about? Or have we eaten on the insane route that takes the reason prisoner? Your children shall be king. You shall be king. And Thane of Cordor, too, went it not so? To the self-same tune and words. Who's here? Ross and Angus? The king hath happily received, Macbeth, the news of thy success. And when he reads thy personal venture in the rebels' fight, his wonders and his praises do contend which should be thine or his. Silenced with that, in viewing o'er the rest of the self-same day, he finds thee in the stout Norwegian ranks. Nothing afeard of what thyself didst make. Strange images of death, as thick as hail came post with post, and every one did bear thy praises in his kingdom's great defence, and poured them down before him. We are sent to give thee from our royal master thanks, and to herald thee into his sight. And, for an earnest of a greater honour, he bade me from him call thee Thane of Cordor, in which addition, hail, most worthy Thane, for it is thine. What, can the devil speak true? The Thane of Cordor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane lives yet, but under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. Whether he was combined with those of Norway, or did line the rebel with hidden help and vantage, or that with both he laboured in his country's wreck, I know not. But treason's capital, confessed and proved, have overthrown him. Glams and Thane of Cordor. The greatest is behind. Thanks for your pains. Banquo, do you not hope your children shall be kings when those that gave the Thane of Cordor to me promised no less to them? That trusted home might yet enkindle you unto the crown besides the Thane of Cordor. But tis strange, and oftentimes to win us to our harm the instruments of darkness tell us truths, win us with honest trifles, Betray us in deepest consequence. Kind gentlemen, let us toward the king. Come, friends. Is execution done on Cordor? Are not those in commission yet returned? My liege, they are not yet come back. But I have spoke with one that saw him die. He did report that very frankly he confessed his treasons, implored your highness's pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like believing it. He died as one that had been studied in his death, to throw away the dearest thing he owed, as twere a careless trifle. Uh, there's no art to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. Macbeth, oh worthiest cousin, the sin of my ingratitude even now was heavy on me. Thou art so far before, that swiftest wing of recompense is slow to overtake thee. Would thou hast less deserved, that the proportion both of thanks and payment might have been mine. Only I have left to say, more is thy due, the more than all can pay. For the service and the loyalty I owe in doing it pays itself, 
Your Highness part is to receive our duties, and our duties are to your throne and state, children and servants, which do but what they should by doing everything safe toward your love and honour. Welcome hither. I have begun to plant thee, and will labour to make thee full of growing. Noble Banquo, thou hast no less deserved, nor must be known no less to have done so. Let me enfold thee, and hold thee to my heart. There if I grow, the harvest is your own. My plenteous joys, wanton in fullness, seek to hide themselves in drops of sorrow. Sons, kinsmen, thanes, and you whose places are the nearest, know we will establish our estate upon our eldest, Malcolm, whom we name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland which honour must not unaccompanied invest him only. But signs of nobleness like stars shall shine on all deservers. From hence to Inverness, and bind us further to you. The rest is labour, which is not use for you. I'll be myself the harbinger, and make joyful the hearing of my wife with your approach. So humbly take my leave. My worthy Cordor. The Prince of Cumberland. That is a step on which I must fall down, or else or leap, for in my way it lies. Stars hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. The eye wink at the hand, yet let that be which the eye fears when it is done to see. The weird sisters met me in the day of success, and I have learned by the perfecter's report they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves air into which they vanished. Whilst I stood wrapped in the wonder of it, came missives from the king, who all hailed me Thane of Cordor, by which title before these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming on of time with Hail, King, that shalt be. This have I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou might not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness is promised thee. Lay to thy heart and farewell. <sighs> Madam? What are your tidings? Madam, the King comes here tonight. Our Thane is coming too. One of my fellows had the speed of him. Give him tending. He brings great news. Go. The raven himself is hoarse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Calm, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts. Unsex me here. And fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood. Stop up the access and passage to remorse, that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my woman's breasts, and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers, wherever... In your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. Come, thick night, and pour thee in the dunner smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, Hold! Hold! Great glams, worthy Cordor, greater than both by the all hail hereafter, I feel now the future in the instant. Dearest love. Mm. Mm. Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall son that morrow see. 
He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall to all our nights and days to come give solely sovereign a sway and masterdom. We will speak further. Only look up clear to all to favour ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. <sighs> this castle hath a pleasant seat. The air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself unto our gentle senses. I have observed. The air is delicate. See our honoured hostess. A good lady. Oh, God hear us for your pains and thanks for your trouble. Your Majesty, for those of old and the late dignities heaped up to them, we rest your hermit. Fair and noble hostess, we are your guests tonight. Your servants, Effa, at your highness' pleasure. Give me your hand. Conduct me to mine host, the Thane of Cordor. We love him highly, and shall continue our graces towards him. By your leave, hostess. If it were done when tis done, then twere well it were done quickly. If the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with his Circe success, that but this blow might be the be-all and end-all here, but here upon this bank and shoal of time we jump the life to come. He's here in double trust, first as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed, then as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door, not bear the knife myself, how now? He has almost supped. Why have you left the chamber? We will proceed no further in this business. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since, and wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? Prithee, peace! I dare do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is none. What beast was it then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. I have given suck, and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from his boneless gums and dashed the brains out had I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail... We fail... But screw your courage to the sticking place and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, his two chamberlains with eye, with wine and wassail so convince, when in swinish sleep their drenched natures lie as in a death, what cannot you and I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber and used their very daggers that they have done? Who dares receive it, other, as we shall make our griefs and clamour roar upon his death? I am settled, and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away, and mock the time with fairest show. False face must hide what false heart doth know. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not. And yet I see thee still. Art thou but a dagger of the mind? I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. That which hath made them drunk hath made me bold. What hath quenched them hath given me fire. Hark. Peace. Hark! Alack, I'm afraid they have awaked and tis not done. The attempt and not the deed confounds us. Hark! I laid their daggers ready. He could not miss them. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. My husband. I have done the deed. This is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. 
There's one did laugh in sleep, and one cried, Murder! That they did wake each other. I stood and heard them. But they did say their prayers and address them again to sleep. One cried, God bless us, and amen the other, as they had seen me with these hangman's hands. Listening their fear, I, I could not say amen. Consider it not so deeply. But wherefore could I not pronounce amen? These deeds must not be thought after these ways. It will make us mad. Go, get some water, and wash these filthy witness from your hand. Why did you bring these daggers from the place? They must lie there. Go carry them, and smear the sleepy grooms with blood. I'll go no more. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on again, I dare not. Give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. I'll gild the faces of the grooms withal, for it must seem their guilt. Whence is that knocking? My hands are of your colour, but I shame to wear a heart so white. I hear a knocking. Retire we to our chamber. A little water clears us of this deed. How easy is it then? Hark! More knocking. Get on your nightgown, lest occasion call us and show us to be watchers. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. To know my deed, to best not know myself. Wait, don't come with thy knocking, I would thou couldst. Here's a knocking indeed. Who's there in the devil's name? Anon, anon. Oh, I pray you, remember the porter. Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed that you do lie so late? Faith, sir, we were carousing to the second cock, and drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things did drink especially provoke? Marry, sir, nose painting, sleep, and urine. I believe drink gave thee the lie last night. Is thy master stirring? And knocking has awaked him, here he come. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring, worthy fame? Not yet. He did command me to call timely on him. I have almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to him. This is the door. I'll make so bold to call, for tis my limited service. Goes the king hence today? He does, Lennox. He did appoint, sir. Oh, horror! Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee! What's the matter? Most sacrilegious murder had broke. Approached the chamber. See, speak me not, and then speak yourselves. Awake! Awake! Ring the alarm bell! Murder and treason! Bankhorn, Donalbay, Malcolm, awake! Shake off this downy sleep, death's counter, but then look on death itself. Up! Up and see the great doom's image. Malcolm! Banquo! As from your graves rise up and walk like sprites to countenance this horror! Ring the bell! What's the business that such a hideous trumpet caused to parley the sleepers of the house? We speak. Oh, gentle lady, it's not for you to hear what I can speak. The repetition in a woman's ear would murder as it fell. Banquo, Banquo, our royal master's murdered. Oh, alas, what in our house? Too cruel anywhere. Dear Duff, I prithee contradict thyself and say it is not so. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I had lived a blessed time. What is amiss? Malcolm, your royal father's murdered. Oh, by whom? Help me, hands. Oh! Look to the lady. When we have our naked frailties hid that suffer an exposure, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work to note further. Fears and scruples shake us. In the great hand of God I stand, and thence against the undivulged pretense I fight of treasonous malice. And so do I. So all. Let's briefly put on manly readiness and meet at the hall together. Well contented. Thou hast it now. King, Codder, Glams, all, as the weird women promised. And I fear thou placed most foully for it. If there come truth from them, as upon thee, Macbeth, their speeches shine, may not they be my oracles as well and set me up in hope. But hush. No more. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, Banquo, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me, to the which my duties are with a most indissoluble tie forever knit. Fail not our feast. My lord, I will not. 
Farewell. Farewell. Men, a word with you. Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please your highness. I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I am reckless what I do to spite the world. And I another, so weary with disasters, tugged with fortune, that I would set my lie on any chance. Both of you know Banquo was your enemy? True, True, my lord. So is he mine, and in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against my nearest of life. We shall, my lord, perform what you commandeth. Within this hour at most, I will advise you where to plant yourselves, acquaint you with the perfect spy of the time, the moment on't, what must be done tonight, and with him, Fleance, his son, that keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to me than is his father's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart, I'll come to you anon. We are resolved, my lord. I'll call upon you straight. Abide within. It is concluded. Banquo, if thy soul's flight, if it find heaven, must find it out tonight. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone? Things without all remedy should be without regard. What's done is done. We have scotched the snake, not killed it. There we will eat our meal in fear and sleep in the affliction of these terrible dreams that shake us nightly. Better be with the dead whom we to gain our peace of centerpiece than on the torture of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Duncan is in his grave. Treason has done its worst. Come on, be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowest that Banquo and his fleance lives. But in them nature's copies, not in turn. There's comfort yet. They are assailable. Then be thou jocund. Ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight, with his drowsy hums hath rung night's yawning peal, there shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge till thou applaud the deed. Prithee, go with me. Stand by. The west yet glimmers with some streaks of day. Now spurs the late traveller apace to gain the timely inn. And near approaches the subject of our watch. Hark! Give us a light there, ho! Tis he, Banquo! A light, a light! Tis he, stand to it. It will be rain tonight. Let it come down. Oh, treachery! Fly, good fleance, fly, fly! Oh. <coughs> ah. Ah. Thou mayst revenge! Oh, slave! There's but one down, the sun is fled. We've lost the better half of the affair. But let's away and see how much is done. You know your own degrees, sit down. At first and last, the hearty welcome. Thanks to your majesty. Ourselves will mingle with society. Our hostess keeps her state. We will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends, for my heart speaks they are welcome. My lord. There's blood upon thy face. There's Banquo's then. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut. That I did for him. That it's the like for Fleance? The most royal, sir, Fleance escaped. Then comes my fit again. Now I am cabined, cribbed, confined, bound into saucy doubts and fears. Get thee gone. Tomorrow we'll hear ourselves again. My royal lord, you do not give the cheer. The feast is sold. Now, good digestion weight on appetite and health on both. May it please your highness sit. Look, the table's full. Where? Which of you has done this? Thou canst not say I did it. Never shake thy gory locks at me. Gentlemen, rise. His Highness is not well. Uh, Sit, worthy friends. My lord is often thus, and hath been from his youth. Pray you, keep seat. The the fit is momentary. Uh, Upon a thought he will again be well. If much you note him, you shall offend him and extend his passion. Feed and regard him not. Are you a man? Aye, and a bold one that dare look on that which might appall the devil. Oh, proper stuff. 
Why do you make such a faces? You look but on a stool. Prithee, see there. Behold, look, lo. How say you? Why, what can I, if thou canst nod? Speak, too. What? What unmanned in folly? If I stand here, I saw him. Banquo. Fie for shame. My worthy lord, your noble friends do lack you. I, I do forget. Do not muse at me, my most worthy friends. I have a strange infirmity which is nothing to them that know me. Come, love and health to all, then I'll sit down. Give me some wine. Fill full. I drink to the general joy of the whole table, and to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss. Would he were here. To all and him we thirst, and all to all. Our duties and a pledge. Avant, quit my sight. Banquo, let the earth hide thee. Thy bones are matterless, thy blood is cold. Thou hast no speculation in those eyes which thou dost glare with. Hence, horrible shadow. Unreal mockery, hence! Why so? Being gone, I am a man again. Pray you, sit still. You have displaced the mirth, broke the good meeting with most admired disorder. Can such things be, and overcome us like a summer's cloud without our special wonder? You make me strange, even to the disposition that I owe, when now I think that you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks when mine is blanched with fear. What sights, my lord? I pray you speak not. He grows worse and worse. Question enrages him. Well, at once, good night. Stand not upon the order of your going, but go at once. Good night, and better health attend his majesty. A kind good night to all. It will have blood. They say, blood will have blood. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. Augurs and understood relations have by maggot pies and chaffs and rooks brought forth the secrets to man of blood. What is the night? Almost at odds with morning, which is which. How sayest thou that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding? Did you send to him, sir? I hear it by the way, but I will send. <laughs> There's not a one of them, but in his house I keep a servant feed. I will tomorrow, and betimes I will, to the weird sisters. More shall they speak, for now I am bent to know by the worst means the worst. You lack the season of all natures. Sleep. Come, will to sleep. My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. Thrice the branded cat hath mute. Thrice, and once the hedge pig whined. Harpier cries, tis time, tis time. Round about the cauldron go. In the poisoned entrails throw, Toad that under cold stone, Days and nights has thirty-one, Sweltered venom sleeping got, Boil though first I the charmed pop. Double, 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 double toil and trouble, Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Fillet of a fenny snake, In the cauldron boil and bake, Eye of newt and toe of frog, Wool of bat and tongue of dog, Adder's fork and blind worm's sting, lizard's frog and owlet's wing, for a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth boil and bubble. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Scale of dragon, tooth of wolf, which is mummy, moor and gulf, of the raven salt sea shark. Root of hemlock digged in the dark, liver of blaspheming dew, gall of goat and slips of yew, silvered in the moon's eclipse, nose of Turk and Tartar's lips, finger of birth, strangled babe, ditch delivered by a drab, make the gruel thick and slab, add thereto a tiger's chaudron, 
for the ingredients of our cauldron. Double, double, toil and trouble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. Cool it with her baboon's blood, then the charm is firm and good. By the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes. Open locks, whoever knocks. How now, you secret black and midnight hags? What is't you do? A deed without a name. I conjure you by that which you profess. Howe'er you come to know it, answer me to what I ask you. Speak. Demand. We'll answer. Say if thou'st rather hear it from our mouths or from our master. Call them. Let me see him. Pour in Sal's blood that I've eaten her now in Farrell, grease that's sweating from the murderer's gibbet, throw into the flame. Come oh, high or low, thy self and of this deathly show. Tell me, thou unknown power. He knows thy thought, hear his speech, but say thou not. Whate'er thou art, for thy good caution, thanks. Thou hast harped my fear aright, but one word more. He will not be commanded. He is another more potent than the first. Had I three ears, I'd hear thee. Then let Macduff... What need I fear of thee? But yet I'll make assurance double sure and take a bond of fate. Thou shalt not live, that I may tell pale-hearted fear it lies and sleep in spite of thunder. What is this that rises like the issue of a king and wears upon his baby brow the round and top of sovereignty? Listen, but speak not to it. Be lion metal, proud, and take no care who chafes frets or where conspirers are. Macbeth shall never vanquished be until great Burnham Wood to high Dunsinane Hill shall come against him. <laughs> that will never be. Who can impress the forest, bid the tree unfix his earthbound root? Oh, sweet Bodeman's good. Rebellion's head rise never till the wood of Burnham rise. And our high place Macbeth shall live the lease of nature, pay his breath to time and mortal custom. Yet my heart throbs to know one thing. Tell me if your art can tell so much. Shall Banquo's issue ever reign in this kingdom? Seek to know no more. I will be satisfied. Deny me this and an eternal curse fall on you. Let me know. Why sinks that cauldron? And what noise is this? Show. Show his eyes and grieve his heart. Come like shadows, so depart. Lord, like the spirit of Banquo, down. Thy crown to sear mine eyeballs. And thy hair, thou other gold-bound brow, is like the first. The third is like the former. Filthy hags, why do you show me this? A fourth. Start eyes. What, will the line stretch out to the crack of doom? And only yet, a seventh. I'll see no more. And yet the gate appears, who bears a glass, which shows me many more. Some I see, the twofold balls and treble scepters carry. Horrible sight. Now I see it is true. For the blood-bolted Banquo smiles upon me and points at them for his... What is this so? I, sir, all this is so, but why stands Macbeth thus amazedly? Come, sisters, cheer we up his sprites and show the best of our delights. I'll charm the air to give a sound while you perform your antic round, that this great king may kindly say our duties did his welcome pay. Where are they? Gone? Let this pernicious hour stand I accursed in the calendar. Come in without there. What's your grace's will? Lennox, saw you the weird sisters? No, my lord. 
He may not buy you. No, indeed, my lord. Infected be the air whereon they ride, and damned all those that trust them. I did hear the galloping of horse. Who wast came by? Tis two or three, my lord, that bring you word Macduff is fled to England. Fled to England? Aye, my good lord. The castle of Macduff I will surprise. Seize upon Fife. Give to the edge of the sword his wife, his babes, and all unfortunate souls that chase him in his line. No boasting like a fool, this deed I'll do before this purpose cool. But no more sights. Where are these gentlemen? Come, bring me where they are. What had he done to make him fly the land? You must have patience, madam. He had none. His flight was madness. When our actions do not, our fears do make us traitors. You know not whether it was his wisdom or his fear. Wisdom? To leave his wife? To leave his babes? His mansion and his titles? In a place from whence himself does fly? He loves us not. All is the fear and nothing is the love. As little is the wisdom where the flight so runs against all reason. My dearest cuz, I pray you school yourself. But for your husband, he is noble, wise, judicious, and best knows the fits of the season. I dare not speak much further. I take my leave of you. It shall not be long, but I'll be here again. Things at the worst will cease, or else climb upward to what they were before. My pretty cousin, blessing upon you. Was my father a traitor, mother? Aye, that he was. What is a traitor? Why? One that swears and lies. And be all traitors that do so? Every one that does so is a traitor and must be hanged. And must they all be hanged that swear and lie? Every one. Who must hang them? Why? The honest men. Bless you, fair dame. I am not to you known, though in your state of honour I am perfect. I doubt some danger does approach you nearly. If you will take a homely man's advice, be not found here. Hence, with your little ones. Heaven preserve you. I dare abide no longer. Whither should I fly? I have done no harm. But I remember now I am in this earthly world, where to do harm is often laudable. To do good sometime accounted dangerous folly. Why then, alas, do I put up that womanly defence to say that I have done no harm? What are these faces? Where is your husband? I hope in no place so unsanctified where such as thou mayest find him. He's a traitor. Thou liest, thou shepherd villain. Watch your egg! Young fry of treachery. He has killed me, mother. Run away. I pray you! Murder! Let us seek out some desolate shade, Macduff, and there weep our sad bosoms empty. Let us rather hold fast our mortal sword, Malcolm, and like good men bestride our downfall and birth them. Each new morn, new widows howl, new orphans cry, new sorrows strike heaven on the face that it resounds as if it felt with Scotland, and yelled out like a syllable of dolour. This tyrant, whose sole name blisters our tongues, was once thought honest. You have loved him well. He has not touched you yet. I am not treacherous. But Macbeth is. I have lost my hopes. Bleed, bleed, poor country. Fare thee well, Lord. I would not be the villain that thou thinkst for the whole space that's in the tyrant's grasp and the rich east to boot. I think our country sinks beneath the yoke. It weeps. It bleeds. And each new day a gash is added to her wounds. I think with all there would be hands uplifted in my right. And here from gracious England have I offer of goodly thousands. But, for all this, when I shall tread upon the tyrant's head, or wear it on my sword, yet my poor country shall have more vices than it had before, more suffer, and more sundry ways than ever by him that shall succeed. What should he be? It is myself, I mean, in whom I know all the particulars of vice so grafted, that when they shall be opened, black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow, and the poor state esteem him as a lamb, being compared with my confineless harms. Not in the legions of horrid hell can come a devil more damned and evil to top Macbeth. Oh, Scotland! Scotland! See, who comes here? Ross, my ever-gentle cousin, welcome hither. Sir, amen. Stand Scotland where it did? Alas, poor country. Almost afraid to know itself, 
It cannot be called our mother but our grave. How does my wife and all my children? The tyrant is not battered at their peace. I have words that would be howled out in the desert air, where hearing should not latch them. Keep it not from me. Quickly, let me have it. Your castle is surprised, your wife and babes savagely slaughtered. Merciful heaven. My children too. Wife, children, servants, all that could be found. And I must be from thence. Be comforted. Let's make us medicines of our great revenge to cure this deadly grief. He has no children. All my pretty ones. Do you say all? Oh, hell kite. Oh, what? All my pretty chickens and their damn one fell swoop. Dispute it like a man. I shall do so, but I must also feel it as a man. I cannot but remember such things were that were most precious to me. Did heaven look on and would not take their part? Sinful Macduff, they were all struck for thee. Not that I am, not for their own demerits, but for mine fell slaughter on their souls. Heaven rest them now. Be this the whetstone of your sword. Let grief convert to anger. Blunt not the heart, enrage it. Bring thou this fiend of Scotland and myself within my sword's length. Set him, if he scape. Heaven forgive him too. This tune goes manly. Come, go we to the king. Our power is ready. Our lack is nothing but our leave. Macbeth is ripe for shaking. And the powers above put on their instruments. When was it she last walked? Since his majesty went into the field, I have seen her rise from her bed, throw her nightgown upon her, unlock her closet, take forth paper, fold it, write upon it, read it, afterwards seal it, and again return to bed, yet all this while in a most fast sleep. Lo you, here she comes. This is her very guise, and upon my life fast asleep. Observe her, stand close. Her eyes are open. Aye, but their sense is shut. Look how she rubs her hands. It is an accustomed action with her to seem thus washing her hands. I have known her continue in this a quarter of an hour. Yet here's a spot. Hark, she speaks. Out, damn spot. Out, I say. Who would have thought the old man to have had so much blood in him? Do you mark that? What? Will these hands ne'er be clean? She has spoke what she should not, I am sure of that. Heaven knows what she has known. Here's the smell of the blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. Oh. What a sigh is there. This disease is beyond my practice. Yet I have known those which have walked in their sleep, who have died holily in their beds. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. To bed. To bed. Come. Give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed. To bed. Will she go now to bed? Directly. More needs she the divine than the physician. Look after her. Keep eyes upon her. My mind she has mated and amazed my sight. I think, but dare not speak. Good night, good doctor. Bring me no more reports, let them fly all. Till Burnham Wood removed a dancing in I cannot taint with fear. What's the boy, Malcolm? Was he not born of woman? Fear not, Macbeth. No man that's born of woman shall air her power upon thee. Fly, false thanes, the mind I sway by and the heart I bear shall never sag with doubt nor shake with fear. What are your tidings? Sir... There is ten thousand soldiers, what sir. What soldiers? The English force, so please you. Take thy face hence. Seaton. I am sick at heart when I do help. Seaton, I say, Seaton. What is your gracious pleasure? What news more? All is confirmed, my lord, which was reported. I'll fight till from my bones my flesh be hacked. 
give me my armor. It is not needed. And yet. put it on! Send up your horses. Scur the country round. Hang those that talk of fear. Give me mine armor. I will not be afraid of death and bane till burn and forest come to dancing in. Cousins, I hope the days are near at hand that chambers will be safe. What wood is this before us? The wood of Burnham. Let every soldier hew him down a bow and bear it before him. Thereby shall we shadow the numbers of our host and make discovery ere them report of us. It shall be done. We learn no other but the confident tyrant keeps still in Dunsinane and will endure our coming down before him. It is his main hope. Where there is advantage to be given, both, more and less, have given him the revolt. And none serve with him but constrained things whose hearts are absent too. Let our just censures attend the true event and put we on industrious soldiership. The time approaches that will with due decision make us know what we shall say we have and what we owe. Thoughts speculative, their unsure hopes relate. But certain issues strokes must arbitrate, towards which advance the war. Hang out our banners on the outward walls. The cry is still they come. Our castle's strength will laugh a siege to scorn. Here let them lie till famine and the ague eat them up. Were they not forced with those that should be ours, we might have met them dareful, beard to beard, and beat them backward home. What is that noise? It is the cry of women, my good lord. Wherefore was that cry? The queen, my lord, is dead. She should have died hereafter. Out. A brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. My lord? Thy story quickly. Gracious my lord, as I did stand my watch upon the hill, I looked toward Burnham, and anon methought the wood began to move. Within this three mile may you see it coming, I say, a, a moving grove. That lies like truth. Fear not till Burnham wood do come to Dunsinane. Arm, arm and out. If this which he avouches does appear, there is no flying hence, nor tarrying here. Ring the alarm bell. Blow, wind. Come, rack. At least we'll die with harness on our back. You, worthy uncle, shall with my cousin, your right noble son, lead our first battle. Worthy Macduff and we shall take upon us what else remains to do, according to our order. Fare you well. Do we but find the tyrant's power tonight, let us be beaten if we cannot fight. Make all our trumpets speak. Give them all breath. Those clamorous harbingers of blood and death. Tyrant, show thy face. If thou be slain and with no stroke of mine, my wife and children's ghost will haunt me still. Either thou, Macbeth, or else my sword with an unbattered edge I sheathe again undeeded. Let me find him fortune, and more I beg not. Macbeth. Turn, hellhound, turn. Of all men else I have avoided thee. But get thee back. My soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword. Thou bloodier villain than terms can give thee out. <coughs> with thy keen sword impressors make me bleed. I'll not fight with thee. Then yield thee, coward. Despair thy charm, for Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. And live to be the show and gaze of the time. We'll have thee as our rarer monsters are painted on a pole and under writ. Here you may see the tyrant. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet. And to be baited with a rebel's curse. Lay on Macduff, and damn be him that first cries, hold enough! 
Here comes newer comfort. Macduff! Hail, King! For so thou art. Behold where stands the usurper Macbeth's cursed head. The time is free. Hail, Malcolm, King of Scotland! Hail, Malcolm, King of Scotland! <laughs> Thank you.